So this video is also a podcast. You can check out my Magical AF podcast on basically any platform where podcasts are. So if you like listening to me chat, chat about stuff that way rather than YouTube, go check that out. Or, you know, you can stay here and listen to the rest of it. So a question that I had, and I posted it on the Magicology YT Facebook, is what do you think blocks people from making their magic successful? And I got a lot of really good responses. So what I figured was I'd go through them and, you know, make some commentary on them and just talk a little bit about it. So first response that I got is doubt. And that's a big one because if you doubt what you are doing, then it's like any other situation. If you think that you're not going to be successful at something, you're more likely to be nervous. You're more likely to, you know, just not think things through and stuff isn't going to work out for you. You're much more likely to succeed at literally anything if you believe in yourself and you believe in what you are doing. And with magic, you know, belief is one of the biggest things. That's why it's the first mechanic in my book magical mechanics and why i talk about it a lot in my books in my book magical theater and effectively every other book at some point um that i've written but if you doubt what you're doing then the energy that you send out is muddled one because that energy is less than if you were to completely believe in what you're doing and when you initially send it out and then if you doubt your ability to create that thing or make that thing or have that thing, then when you're acting in accord and going through your motions to manifest what it is you're trying to manifest, that's going to take energy away from the spell work and you're actually not going to be going in the direction of that desire that you had when you did the spell work itself. The next comment that I have says, tough question, I would have to say the ability to accurately identify and distinguish what it is that one truly desires, and that's also true. So when I talk about statement of intent, you have to exactly know what you're looking for. If you don't exactly know what you're looking for, it's like not caring at what you're aiming at when you're, you know, firing off a bow and arrow. Are you actually going to hit the target? Eh, maybe. Who knows? So... You know, when we're working with our statement of intent or we're picturing in our mind's eye and we're doing visualization during spell work about about what it is exactly that we want, there was this one phrase in a metaphysics class that I attended at a, um, um, what is it, a Unity Church years ago, which was you got to write a check that the universe can cash. Basically, the idea that you got you to gotta know what you want or the universe can't give it to you. You got to know where you're going. In order to drive there, you're not like, you know, oh, I'm going to this place in this town. Okay, you end up in the town center driving around in the circles. You're not exactly going to get there, you know, and like if you don't understand what you truly want, magic takes its takes the shortest route from A to B. It's like lightning from, you know, cloud to ground, whatever, even though it's backwards, whatnot. But magic gives you what your heart desires, maybe not what you think that you want. But what do you really want deep down? And this is one of the reasons why repeating rituals and reflecting on rituals and being metacognitive and keeping a journal in general to really understand your thoughts, your drives, and what you want is very important. Because when you step into that ritual chamber and you're doing your statement of intent and whatnot, the universe is geared to give you what you want because we manifest things all the time, consciously and subconsciously. Like, if I wanted to eat chips right now, I could manifest that. If I wanted to make a pizza right now, it might be a little bit difficult. I'd have to wait until stores open because it's 4.17 in the morning, but you get the idea. All right, next one. The fear. And to think that God is the only spirit close to man on earth because the others do not exist or are bad. That was the next comment that I got on this question. So, the fear. The fear that maybe what... Maybe you're not, um, what is it, deserving of this thing that you want. The fear that maybe you're manipulating with something that isn't, 
like 100% say for something, you know, that fear about doing magic, like what am I working with, then, you know, you could have spirits that feed off of that energy, your intent is not focused, you're not exactly knowing what you're going for or how to raise the energy and how to execute that spell work properly because you're afraid of executing magic or maybe you're actually afraid of getting what you say that you want maybe it's the level of responsibility you're going to have when you get that thing or some people actually most people fear change our brains are wired to dislike change actually that's why brains are pattern machines you know so that brings up a whole another thing about how ooh, another good topic i'm probably make a video slash podcast on is you know fear in terms of manifestation, how we really should face our fears to deal with them. A good friend of mine makes it a big thing of his to face everything that he fears. Uh, next one, a big thing I have learned and still battle with is myself. So basically, fighting with yourself can hold back your magic from being successful. What do you really want? Maybe you're fighting with yourself, maybe with like at least from my standpoint, years ago, addiction. You know, the inner term turmoil that we have within ourselves to stay focused or stay sober or things like that, your intention's going all over the place. You know, you, you're not focused when you're dealing with <clears throat> inner conflict. So that's one reason why it's really important for us as magical people to really understand what we want, understand what we're like, understand and be at peace with ourselves because that's where we can focus our energy and there isn't this inner battle going on which saps our energy, saps our focus and things like that. So really we want 100% of our brains, 100% of ourselves on our own team. If you have like self-doubt, critical thought, um, anything negative that you're doing yourself from the way that you think, the way that you talk, the way that you eat, the any habits that you have, there's going to be this conflict of like cognitive dissonance of you want to do better, but you're not doing better right now. That's inner conflict and that's sapping energy and focus. Um, next one, that's a complex question. Not being sure of what they really want before they are playing and not being objective. True. So this goes to what I said before, you got to understand what your intention is and exactly what you want, because magic will give you exactly what you want. Um, not being objective, you know, kind of take the feelings out of your spell work and whatnot. I mean, you have to manipulate your emotions when it comes to raising energy, because you want to get that high and that vibe when you are raising energy for your spell work. But overall, being objective about exactly it is what you want. Why do you want it? What's what's going to be good about it for you not being emotionally charged because then that sets up a fraying of energy because it gets tied up in the emotions and maybe the backstory of the whole situation you know more on like the past and stuff rather than okay I'm doing my ritual right now and I need to be focused on the future and my outcome if you're trying to visualize that outcome and you're too busy getting muddled up in the feelings of it, then unfocused energy, things like that. Fear of what they're doing and fear of what they don't understand. Yep. I'm just continuing to read the comment, by the way. Um, fear of what they're doing and fear of what they don't understand. Maybe the idea of, I've, I mentioned this earlier, fear of what they're doing. If you're afraid of doing magic, keep working on it again and again and again, because it's going to get easier you're going to become more comfortable comfortable if there's like bumps in the night around you or the idea that magic is not safe of course that's garbage and fear of what they don't understand i think that yeah i effectively covered that keep and i'm going to keep going and if you're looking at magic from the esoteric viewpoint that magic is a tool used for self-improvement and anything else would be sorcery or black magic once again that's that whole fear that wraps around it which takes away from the energy and focus um not fully understanding the ritual process that's another big one because if you don't raise energy your energy is going nowhere you know there's that's why there's that whole ritual structure of you know you cast your circle you invoke your your directional deities your main god and goddess or what have you from what other pantheon it is you're working with um at the time 
and then you have your statement of intent, raising energy, the actual spell work, and then the takedown and, and whatnot. So unless you do that kind of stuff, it's like baking a cake. You got to do some stuff in a certain order or your cake is going to maybe not get cooked at all or just look like a, a mashed mush of garbage. Um, let's see. I'm going to continue here, uh, not fully understanding the ritual process, and also tied into that would be the fear of what they find when working on the id. So, interesting point there with the id, which would be our more animalistic kind of mind of, you know, it wants, it wants food, it wants sex, it wants those carnal things. It's not very high-level thinking. So, you know, where our desire is, what we desire, what we want to fight after, what we want to compete for, that's the id. So maybe not understanding yourself about that and keeping that under control, once again, loses focus and therefore loses energy. Moving on to another comment, too little attention to detail or incorrect sources. Yeah, that could be another one. With too little attention to detail, if you're just kind of glossing over a ritual and you think you have a, a ritual structure that's not that well detailed you're not going to get too deep into the psychodrama and therefore your energy that's raised isn't going to be that colorful let's say or maybe you're not executing um your spell work good enough and your heart's just not really in it and, you know, the more complex a ritual gets, the deeper we go in the, into the subconscious and the more change can occur. So I think that's what this comment can be about, at least from my um, conjecture. Got another comment. Design, probably designated culture plus schooling and religion, stuff like that. So, like, that's more of, like, the dogma stuff. Once again, that could be around, like, <clears throat> is magic bad or harmful? Or maybe that... You could be conditioned that maybe from a certain background that you have or something, you're not deserving of some success. Anyway, this talks about really innate beliefs and stuff that we've basically downloaded from society and maybe even our families and stuff. Those deep held beliefs are going to hold us back because regardless, if we want to manifest something, if we have deeply held beliefs that we can't have that thing or there's some other blockage in the way, then that's going to prevent us and block us from actually having what we want. Uh, another, the last comment I got is, not doing it at all, that's a big one, um, you can't, you know, manifesting results with magic doesn't exactly happen if you don't do any magic, and then um, the other half of this comment says, um, very inconsistent practice, and that's a big one, not doing magic on a regular basis, you know, it's like riding a bike or playing a piano or something, you're gonna lose your oomph with being able to raise energy, even sensing, you know, different entities, if you're working with spirits and whatnot, there's that overall vibe and that sense that you get when you're working magic regularly that you effectively lose touch with if you don't have a consistent practice. So yeah, this was a pretty big one. Um, when it comes to what kind of blocks people from making their magic successful. These are a bunch of different answers that I got. I hope that I, you know, went over them and kind of fleshed them out well enough. Thanks everyone that gave me a comment. Um, this was a, this was a question that I asked on the channel page, um, the community tab for my YouTube channel. Um, and I'll, hopefully be able to come up with more questions and stuff because what I'm getting back from you guys is awesome. I love this interaction. So thanks for everyone that gave me an answer. If you're listening to this, you probably know who you, who you are. I didn't want to list screen names and stuff because I don't feel like sharing any information, but I really appreciate everyone that gave me a comment. So let me know what you guys think about this, and um, I look forward to interacting with all of you. Good hunting. Thanks for checking out my video. If you want to learn more from me, I have a lot of classes on Udemy. You can find the links to a lot of those in the description. If you want to check out my books on Amazon, I have Creating Consciousness, Magical Mechanics, Magical Theater, Handy Sigil Magic, Magical Movement, which is an update and expansion upon Handy Sigil Magic, Magical Mastery, which is a combination masterwork of Magical Theater and Magical Mechanics. 
and The Guide to the Spheres and Beyond. You can also find me on Facebook at MagicologyYT. You can email me at priestofthenecro at gmail.com, and you can even check out my Instagram, which is Magicology. And good hunting.